Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar, Getting Started with Retailer RFID Mandates. My name is Stacey Ajum, and I'm a marketing manager here, and we're excited to have you on the line. Um, just before we get started, a few things to let you know. Um, this webinar is being recorded, and so all registrants will receive a link to the recording um, once the broadcast is finished. And the recording will also be posted to our website along with our YouTube channel. And we will have a Q&A at the end, so please submit your questions via the dashboard. And if you still have questions and we didn't get or we didn't get to your question during the webinar, please feel free to reach out. And we do have a portal where you can opt in to our marketing emails. So please go ahead and sign up. Um, and this is a great way um, for you to, again, stay in touch with Bartender and um, join us for our other webinars. And with that, our presenters, I'm going to introduce our Michael Leo, Director of Product Marketing and RFID subject matter expert, Chris Brown from TSC Printronics Auto ID. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Mike. Great. Thank you, Stacey. Um, as Stacy mentioned, I head up uh, product marketing for uh, Siegel Scientific. And for today's webinar, I'm really, really proud uh, and excited to be uh, joined by our printer partner, TSC Printronics Auto ID, leading manufacturer of thermal barcode printing technologies, and especially the resident RFID subject matter expert, Chris Brown, today. Uh, Chris has been part of the AIDC industry for over 20 years. He has extensive global experience uh, and expertise with large manufacturing and supply chain companies. And in particular, he has expertise in RFID technology, specializing in encoding and numbering standards. Chris is an active member of several AIM and RAIN RFID standards workgroups. And Chris's work has included extensive insights into the RFID numbering systems specified by the ISO and GS1 standards. And it's great to have him here today to hear his uh, expertise. So I'm gonna, we'll look to spend the next 25 minutes on this agenda. I'll uh, start with a quick introduction, but then I'll quickly turn the presentation over to Chris to give you an overview of the retailer mandate for RFID. While as you, most of you have seen, following and adhering to the retailer mandates, mandates can be rather complicated and confusing. Chris will be providing a quick primer on what you need to do. He'll walk you through step-by-step step on how you can use Bartender to design the RFID labels and tags and to print them on TSC Printronics uh, RFID printers. Uh, we'll then end the presentation with a short Q&A session. And uh, any questions that we don't hit during that session, we'll be sure to reach out to you individually after the webinar and answer. make sure your questions are answered. So a quick note for anyone not familiar with us, we're Siegel Scientific, makers of bartender software. Our company has over 35 years of rich history in barcode reading, label design and printing, printer drivers, and integration. You know Bartender as the leading software label management solution that helps customers to simplify and automate their labeling processes so they can design, create, manage, and print labels, RFID tags, and documents with ease. Bartender's Advantages has made it the number one label management solution in the world. Most important, Bartender is easy to use yet powerful. Bartender is at the center of our customers' labeling ecosystem, connecting their business data and business systems to their labels, to their printers, providing the highest performance optimized printing from anywhere, anytime. And we are very proud that we are the number one Gartner customer recommended label management solution and all of the Gartner top 25 supply chain organizations use Bartender. Our customers come in all sizes from small to large across all industries. And today we have over 250,000 customers around the world printing over 50 billion labels per year. So with that, I'll look to uh, turn the presentation over to uh, Chris. Thank you, Michael. Hi, I'm Chris Brown. I'm the RFID Program Director at TSC Printronics Auto ID. 
and I'm going to talk a little bit about using Bartender to print compliance labels for the retailer mandates. Uh, you've probably been getting letters or some kind of documentation from your retailer customers. Uh, you are, in other words, you're a supplier to one of the big retailers, and they are now telling you that you need to apply RFID labels to the items that you ship to them. Uh, big names in this, Walmart, of course, that's the biggest name that's making the most noise for RFID labeling right now. But Dick's Sporting Goods also just issued a mandate, and that will go live in January 2024. Uh, the rumor on the street is that Target is looking at this as well, and if Target follows suit, they'll probably do it just like Walmart and Dick's Sporting Goods have been doing it. There are other retailers such as Macy's, Belk, Dillard's, and so on, Nordstrom, that have had RFID mandates in place for many years. However, those mandates tend to apply only to apparel items, and those items are getting manufactured in Asia in large quantities and consequently labeled in large quantities. Uh, everything now, all of the mandates are referring to item level tagging. Historically, there were mandates, especially from Walmart, that referred to logistic case and pallet labeling. Uh, but those mandates fizzled out, and so right now everything is about item-level tagging. In other words, tagging a very specific retail item one at a time. And this is going to be our generic example today. So you are a supplier. Uh, as a supplier, you're being faced with these mandates. You must comply, so you're going to need some basic equipment to do that. At a minimum, you will need RFID labels. They look just like standard, normal paper or poly labels. They come on a roll. They run through a printer like this. Here we have one of these labels. On the front, it just looks like a standard label. But on the back side, you can see that it has a squiggly antenna. And very, very small in the center of this is an RFID chip. That chip has some basic memory. And that's what you're going to encode with your RFID-enabled printer while at the same time printing the front of the label face. So you need your RFID labels. Then you're going to need an RFID-enabled printer. We have here the TSC Printronics T6000E today. And then finally, you're going to need some software. We, of course, recommend bartender label software to design your labels, to print and encode them, and to handle your serial number management, which is a fairly important aspect of this. You need to make sure that you do not duplicate your serial numbers. So you know that you need the RFID labels, but you need to know exactly what kind or kinds of labels you can use. You will receive documentation from the major retailer, and that documentation will tell you what types of labels you can use including the RFID inlay portion inside the label. Uh, that documentation will either specify everything within the documentation, or the documentation will reference Auburn University's RFID lab specs, which are called the ARC specs. So Auburn University has a very famous RFID lab. They take RFID inlays, they test them, they test them on different items and for different applications, and they say, okay, these inlays A, B, and C are good for this particular application, so we are going to call that Auburn ARC spec, and then they have a letter. And they'll have different Auburn ARC specs for different product categories, and you will need to use an inlay from the relevant spec for your product type. The other relevant concept from Auburn University's RFID lab that you may be required to follow is what they call the ALEC program. So you have your labels, you have an ARC certified inlay, you're going to print and encode some, but the retailer wants to know in advance that you have printed the correct information, that you have encoded the tags properly, and that you're going to put them onto the retail item in a good location so that they can read the tags. 
Well, this ALEC program is an approval process where you're going to print some sample tags, send them off to Auburn University, and they're going to tell you everything is good to go or you need to change this, and you go through that process until you get a green light. I do want to call out this concept of a sticker. If you notice that picture in the bottom right, that is the type of label design that you will be using mostly to tag your items. You will note that there is no UPC or EAN barcode on that, and that is because there is an assumption that the product already has the barcode on it. So remember this concept of a sticker. I want to quickly talk about GS1. You may or may not have heard of GS1, but you most certainly have heard of UPC barcodes in the United States or Canada. Or if you're outside of the U.S. and Canada, you've heard of EAN or JAN barcodes. For the retailer mandate purposes, think of them all as the same thing. I have here a basic retail product. We're just going to call this generic retail product today. Like almost all retail products, on the back here, it does have the UPC barcode right there. And that barcode is a number. That number tells a barcode reader what company this is and what the specific item is. So those barcodes and the numbering systems behind those barcodes, that's all administered and managed by GS1. Now, GS1 is important here because they do not manage only these UPC EAN barcodes. They also manage the RFID encodings that correspond to these. The corresponding RFID encoding that the retailer mandates are using is called an SGTIN 96. It stands for Serialized Global Trade Item Number 96 Bits. GTIN, Global Trade Item Number, is another term for UPC number or EAN number or JAN number. It's the same number. Then you add the S to get the serialization. In other words, the individual instance of each and every retail item. And the 96 means you encode it into 96 bits in the tag. If you look at the graphic there on the slide, you can see that the retailer has a shelf full of blue jeans. They're all Levi's 501 blue jeans, manufacturer Levi's, model 501, waist 32, length 32. They all have identical UPC barcodes. What we're doing with RFID is adding an additional label to those existing labels, and that additional label will be uniquely serialized so now the retailer can quickly press a button on their RFID reader and count all of the pairs of genes of that make and model. And they can even use the RFID to locate specific items. So now we're going to jump over to Bartender, and we're actually going to create a quick barcode and RFID label for this retail product here. Here we are in Bartender. I've used the wizard to create a blank label with the correct dimensions as per the label stock that I'm going to be using. And if you recall, we talked about this idea of a sticker, which is a simple RFID label that has some very basic information printed on it, but key, it has an RFID encoding in it. Now I need to for the printed aspects, I need to have two, this is for the Walmart mandate, but the Dix is following suit as well. I need to have two text objects. One of those will be my UPC number, and the other will be the item description. And then all of the mandates also want us to have the EPC logo printed on the label. to advise all users and parties that, hey, there is RFID in there. So your basic RFID sticker is going to look something like this. Now I have cheated a little bit, and I have created already the correct 
RFID sticker for this particular retail product. Okay, That number up at the top, that is the number in the UPC barcode. Then below that is what they call the item description. It's the company Sensor Swab Ultra 12-pack. And then we have the EPC logo there as well. So that is the data that we need to print. But the most important part is the RFID encoding. So here in Bartender, we're going to add an RFID object to our label. We're going to select EPC, which in this case roughly means GS1. Remember, GS1 is the system of standards for our retail barcodes. So I'm going to choose RAIN RFID EPC. And then I'm going to choose the specific encoding called SGTIN96, which, if you will recall, is basically the RFIDification of the UPC or EAN barcode. I'm going to put into the SGTIN96, I'm going to put in there the company, the product, the item number, and the specific serial number. When I select SGTIN96, you will notice over here on the left, that various data elements suddenly appear. So those are the data elements that I need to populate in order to correctly print and encode an RFID label. First up is the filter value. For the retailer mandates, use one. One means that it is a point of sale item. I won't go into more detail than that, but use one unless you are told to use something else. Then we have our company prefix and our item reference number. These two are the backbone of our UPC number. If you note, we have our UPC number right here. Part of this number is the company reference, and part of it is the item reference. But normally, we do not know what part is the company number and what part is the item reference. And that's because the company number is variable length. We're going to take this entire UPC number, going to copy it, and go over to a GS1 web service, we'll call it. It's a web page. And we can input that UPC number, and GS1 will break it down into the company prefix and, by extension, also the item reference number. So you will notice now that we have the UPC company prefix right in here. Now there's also this GS1 company prefix, and they're the same, except the GS1 version has a zero in front. Well, the RFID encodings require that we use the global version of a company number. The UPC version is just for Canada and the United States. To make that into a global company number, we have to add a zero to it. So that is going to be our company prefix. We'll jump back to bartender and our RFID object, and we're going to input that as the company number. Now for the item reference, the item reference will be this UPC number minus the company prefix portion which is that right there, and minus the very last check digit. So the item reference number is in this case 13502. We're going to copy that and paste that into Bartender. Now you will notice when I look at the RFID object in Bartender, it's telling me that I have an invalid length. And that is because the RFID encoding requires that I add one more digit, which is called the indicator digit, and it has certain values that you can use. But for the retailer mandates, use a zero. So pad the item reference number with a zero. And you notice when I did that, the RFID encoder object is accepting my value. It's saying it's a valid number. And then we have our serial number. Bartender, by default, sets it to 1 to start. I'm going to Bartender's Transforms tab, Serialization. I'm going to turn on Serialization. 
numerically going up by one every one label. Now before we actually print and encode, the retailer mandates always specify one additional thing you need to do, and that they call that permalock or lock permanently. So after we encode the tags, we want to lock the data in the tags permanently so that nobody can alter the data. Bartender supports this in several ways. I like to use the RFID object, go to the security tab, and specify the settings just for this document. That gives me a little finer control over the various security settings. Now we have been encoding what is called the EPC or UII memory bank. In this case they call it block. By default it will be open but we see here the option to lock permanently and I can or put in a password or I can actually leave that blank. There are different uh, scenarios for different types of passwords. We will use a password. I will have Bartender generate that randomly and hit OK. So now after I encode each and every tag, Bartender will also tell the printer to lock the tags permanently, lock the data. So now I'm going to hit File and Print and let's print and encode five of these. When I hit Print, out will come five printed and properly encoded tags. Okay, so there we have five printed and encoded tags, but before we start using those, before we send them off to Auburn University for their ALEC approval process, we want to check the encodings ourselves. We can actually use the printer as a reading device to check those encodings. So let's see how we do that. To use the printer to check the encodings, uh, we have to position one of these tags underneath the encoding antenna. In this case, I use the external encoding antenna on this printer. This printer has two, but we use this one on the outside of the printer. So we have to open up the printer, open the print head on the printer, and now we can, we're going to get a little error message here. That's okay. We're just going to ignore that. And we're going to take this last tag, which should have been number five, and we're going to position that tag right underneath the encoding antenna. I have my printer offline now. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to scroll until I get to RFID. Then I'm going to scroll down to diagnostics. I can do many things under this menu item, but I'm going to just use the generic read tag. I have my tag positioned there. I'm going to press enter and the printer will read the tag and display the value on the front of the screen here. Now you will note that the value that comes up here will be very different from what I think I encoded. So we're also going to check that as well. I'm going to press the button and read the tag. And there you can see the value starts with a 3-0 and ends with a triple zero five. Now GS1 has another tool that we can use. It's their EPC encoder decoder web page. And if you remember, when I read the tag, I got a, an unusual looking value. It's this value right here. I have already typed it in. Started with a 3-0 and ended with a 0005. Okay. When I plug that value in, that value is the hexadecimal conversion of what my UPC number or my EAN number plus the serial number were plus the filter value, plus a few other things. When I plug that value in, this encoder decoder tool automatically unpacks and decodes the values and breaks it down. I can see here that I did a successful SG1096 encoding. I have a filter value of 1. I can see the global version of my company prefix number and that is correct, that's the company prefix number that we had, and I can see my item reference number with that leading zero, and finally I can see the correct serial number of five. So we correctly printed and encoded a sticker, a so-called sticker, for one of the retailer mandates. 
Now I'm going to pass it back over to Michael, who's going to finish things up. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. That was a great overview of how uh, RFID uh, fits in with today's retailer mandates. You actually make it, made it look very easy uh, to design and to print the right RFID labels uh, for, a, again, for a very complicated topic. So really, we're uh, near the end of our presentation. Next steps are, of course, if uh, you have any questions or need more information, please reach out to contact us, uh, Chris, or our partner resellers, who uh, typically both carry bartender software as well as TSC Printronics printers. So uh, at this point in time, I'd like to switch over to our Q&A session for the uh, time remaining until 8.30. So Chris uh, and I will now uh, take a look at the questions uh, that uh, you've put uh, put into uh, the GoToWebinar panel here. So if you do have a question, go to the uh, questions tab uh, or the questions choice and to type in your question. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, if we don't answer your questions right now, we will uh, reach out to everyone individually and provide answers to uh, any questions that you might have. Mike, Chris here. I see a question that came in during the presentation. It's a good question. Uh, what is the difference between SG-1096 and SG-1198? I can take that. Uh, so GS1 has long had the concept of a serial number, a serial number as a data element that you could put into barcodes, uh, databases, whatever. And the older existing concept of a serial number in the GS1 world allowed for up to 20 alphanumeric characters. So that's the standard GS1 data element of a serial number, up to 20 alphanumeric characters. The problem with that in the RFID world is that 20 alphanumeric characters takes up a whole lot of tag memory. So it means more expensive tags, uh, longer encoding times, longer reading times, and so on. So when GS1, actually at that time, EPC Global made the RFID encoding standards, they came up with a different serial number variant, uh, which is up to, I think, yeah, it's 12 numeric only characters with a maximum value of, what is it, 274 billion and change. So the idea with the SG-296 is that you can only use a numeric serial number up to 12 digits with a maximum value of 274 billion. Uh, but conceptually, SG-296 and SG-1198 they're conceptually the same thing. They are the GTIN number plus a serial number. So the only difference is the format and length of that serial number. Got it. Uh, there's a, another question which I think you can answer, Chris, is uh, is the Auburn University and the ALEC uh, RFID programs free? And how does uh, one of our uh, users reach out to them? So they are free to Walmart uh, suppliers. So they're free to for the suppliers to send in their tags and get the tags approved. The Auburn's program is not free for the inlay manufacturers who get their inlays tested and validated. And how they can reach out in the documentation that, you're, that the supplier will get from the retailer, that documentation will have multiple contact points at Auburn University to go through the various approval process steps. Hmm. And uh, sort of related to that, is Auburn University the only sort of official approver of this or are there other organizations that could fill this role? Yes, so some of the retailer mandates like Macy's, they did their own internal approval, internal approval process. And so if you get the specs from Macy's, if you're a supplier to Macy's, for example, Macy's will tell you which inlays are approved for Macy's use 
and how to get them approved directly, how to get your labels approved directly with Macy's. Um, so some of the retailers take that approach where they do the approval in-house and other retailers like Walmart and Dick Sporting Goods leverage the Auburn University, we'll call it service. Got it, okay. Well, uh, and just to wrap it up since we're at the bottom of uh, uh, the hour here, uh, so as I think I mentioned, uh, a copy, everyone that uh, registered for this webinar and as well as attended it will get a copy of the presentation we just showed uh, along with uh, a link to uh, the recording. And also, as I mentioned, if you did ask a question, which a number of you did, uh, and uh, in this limited time, we didn't get a chance to address it, we will uh, reach out to you individually after uh, the webinar and uh, provide an answer to your question. So uh, with that, I wanna sort of bring this uh, webinar to an end and to, uh, again, thank you, uh, a great big uh, thank you to you, Chris, uh, for helping us uh, better understand the retailer mandates for RFID and really making it, I guess, from my perspective, really e a very simple, straightforward process for, for meeting these uh, mandates uh, for, for a customer's uh, retail business. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bartender, for hosting this. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Yep. So thanks, everyone, and have a great uh, rest of your day.